Hi, in this session, we're going to talk about setting up a center of excellence. We're going to look at what a center of excellence is, why you might build one around observability, what the core components are, who the key stakeholders are, what our model looks like, and finally, how New Relic can help feed and water your center of excellence. So firstly, what is a center of excellence? Well, some people see a center of excellence like an academy or a university, somewhere to learn from the best. Others see it more like a place to practice, to hone your skills, deliver capabilities. And yet others see it more like a repository or a library of information where you can go to find the information you need. Now we actually see it as all three of these things. If I had to define a centre of excellence, it'd be something like this. A team of dedicated individuals that's drawn from multiple functional areas from across the organisation that lead the way in exploring and adopting tools, techniques and practices. The centre of excellence promotes collaboration, standards, best practice and adoption. It's supported by a community with a rich collaborative knowledge base reinforced with frequent enablement and learning. So why would you build a centre of excellence? Well, one reason is for standards, to capture, share and retain standards and best practice within your organisation. Another reason you might build a centre of excellence is for speed, to help accelerate and ramp up teams as quickly as possible, reducing time to value. And the third reason you might build a centre of excellence is for scale in order to drive the adoption of these standards and this accelerated speed across complex, large organisational environments. So what are the benefits of an observability centre of excellence? Well, one area is adoption. A centre of excellence leads to wider adoption of the observability practices, tools and processes. It helps reduce the start-up time for new teams and individuals and it helps to break down those skill silos. Another benefit is in implementation. A centre of excellence helps maintain standards and helps provision frameworks for implementation across the organisation. It also provides a supported continuous cycle of enablement, learning and training to keep observability fresh and new and part of every day. Another area of benefit is expertise. A centre of excellence encourages collaboration and sharing of success and best practices. It helps practitioners support each other and it helps prevent expertise decay. So what does a centre of excellence look like? This is the fundamental framework with some tangible components. Collaboration is one of the most important components. It's essential that people can talk to each other, share the success and value they've made. Onboarding is another area. How do accounts and teams get on board, get access to the platforms and the tools that they need? Standards. We need to define those standards and make them available to anyone who's rolling out these tools. The knowledge base provides a, a single place for people to go to, to get the information they need. And a centre of excellence also encourages enablement and ongoing learning by making it easy to understand what needs to be learnt and where you can go to get your enablement. So if you want to build a centre of excellence, generally we see it as a two stage process. The first stage is all about getting up and running. And the second stage is long term cyclical stage where we're continually feeding and watering that centre of excellence with information and keeping it fresh. If you've decided to build a centre of excellence, then the first things you need to do will be this. You first, you need to understand your objectives. Why are you building a centre of excellence around observability? What do you hope to achieve? And how are you going to measure that success? Define some KPIs to help you measure that over the long term. We find that the centre of excellence is only successful if it's well sponsored because you need to ro roll this out across an organisation. You need to ensure that you have sponsorship from leadership. Once you have that, the next step is to identify the key stakeholders that are required to make it work. You'll also need to select and implement the supporting technologies you need to ensure that people can collaborate and access the resources they need. 
Finally, you want to select any best practices that you want to start with, and then you need to start recruiting some subject matter experts or guild members. So let's take a look at the key stakeholders involved in a centre of excellence. We tend to see three groups of people. The first is the core team. This is a group of just one or two people who have a responsibility for ensuring the centre of excellence is available, up and running and doing what it needs. It's not a full time job, but these people will tend to have the relationship with New Relic. They'll manage accounts, access, financial showback and those sorts of things. The next group of people is what we call the Observability Council. This is a group of people who have been nominated to make some decisions about the standards and best practices that you want to implement across your organisation. This is generally drawn from um, engineering leads, managers, product owners, those sorts of things. And it's their job to help define some of those standards that you want to implement when rolling out observability. The final group is what we call the Observability Guild. And a guild is just one, one name, lots of other companies use lots of different names for this sort of thing. But effectively, what we're trying to do here is find the experts, the people with passion for observability, and we're trying to get them together to help the rest of the organisation move faster. You can't nominate these people, you can't force people to be in a guild. They need to bubble to the top. You grab hold of them, you support them, and they help you roll out observability to the rest of your teams. Here, I've tried to put the model all on one page. In the centre here, we have the practitioners. These are the people using the observability tooling. It's from within this group that we might select some of those guild members. Above that, we have the stakeholders, which I've talked about just now. And above that, we have the collaboration tools. And we find really there are only two collaboration tools that you really need to have. Now, the first is a place for people to talk ask questions, get answers. And that's usually served best with something like a Slack or Teams channel. The people who man this channel will be the core team. They'll tend to answer problems such as account issues, user issues, finance issues, showback issues, anything really to do with um, the accounts or enablement. And then also in this channel, you have the guild heroes, those people who are there to help answer questions, to give examples, to help people through and point them in the right direction. We find generally it's best to have just a single channel for observability, at least at the start. This way, people have just one place to go to get the answers they need. Some of our customers have gone to the next level and have individual channels for different topics. But I'd recommend you start with just the one. The other collaborative tool that we see works well is the observability clinic. You might know this by another name, a tech talk, a round table, a lunch and learn, whatever you want to call it. The idea is that you get people from across the organization to come and share what they've been doing in observability. They can share the successes and maybe failures that they've had, the best practice and the value that they've generated. This really helps other teams work on the back of what other teams have produced in the past. On occasion, you might want to invite members from New Relic to come and give a workshop or a roadmap session as well. So those are the collaboration tools. We also find having a knowledge base is essential for a centre of excellence to work. A knowledge base is a single place to go to get all the information. I've often seen in customers who don't have a center of excellence that different teams will have different sets of information stored in different places. If you can get a knowledge base up and running early in your organization, then you can ensure that all of that information is together and easily accessible. You can build a knowledge base in a wiki, in Confluence, in Microsoft Teams, SharePoint, wherever you like really. But the key thing is it's a single place for people to go to find the standards, the best practice, any automation guides or quick start guides. It's where they'll find the information about how to onboard, how to request access, how to get a new account. It's also where all your learning will be. How do you get enabled? What courses do you need to go on? Those sorts of things. 
Now, sometimes it's quite difficult to start from scratch to build a knowledge base. And so what we've built is something called the Launchpad. It's a starter kit for building your own knowledge base. It's fill in the blanks. It's plain text. You can copy and paste it into nearly any system that you're using. It just gets you up and running quickly. I recommend you take a look. So how can New Relic help feed and water your observability centre of excellence? The first area that we can support a centre of excellence is with our documentation and support. I often speak to developers at customers who are struggling with an issue and haven't raised a support ticket. Support is there to help you implement New Relic. I think sometimes that the developers or the practitioners don't know that they are allowed to raise the support or don't feel that it's appropriate um, to help them with their implementation. So part of the centre of excellence should include how do you go about getting support, whether that's talking to your peers in the collaboration channels or raising a support ticket with New Relic. Either way, let's make sure that people know these tools are available. So the next area where we can help your centre of excellence is with the New Relic University. At New Relic University can provide a number of courses that are instructor led that help you on a variety of topics. They provide these both publicly on a calendar that you can just um, register and turn up, but also they can be organised privately. There's a whole range of self-paced workshops as well that you can use to upskill and get enabled. There's also an exam available. We recommend that your centre of excellence include some sort of learning path so that new users can get from zero to hero in no time at all. Here's an example, for instance. In this case, if the new user is not familiar with the fundamentals of observability, then they should do our fundamentals course. If they're not familiar with New Relic, then there's a number of self-paced courses to go through. In this case, there's then an instructor-led course and possibly some TAM-led sessions. The third area of help is what our account teams can help deliver. Events like FutureStack, for instance, but more specifically, workshops, road match sessions, early access programs and betas and hackathons. So that's the model in a nutshell. So that's the model in a nutshell. Practitioners collaborating together using resources from the knowledge base assisted by New Relic. So if you want to build passion expertise around observability best practices, then a centre of excellence is what you need. It's going to help you build a collaborative culture around observability. It's going to help you accelerate that time to market with faster adoption. It's going to provide consistent and standard working practices across your organisation. And we're going to improve that widespread domain knowledge and fight that skills decay. The Centre of Excellence provides a great foundation for maturing your observability and it's going to allow you to realise more value and improve your return on investment. We have a number of customers using Centres of Excellence and they use different amounts. We have some doing far more than I've spoken today and we have some that only just take small amounts. This customer, for example, is driving innovation by using a whole ream of ready to use best practices and solutions that they make available to their teams. So that's all I have to say today. Um, the next steps are the first, decide that you need one. I think you do need a center of excellence. I think it will do a grand job for you. The next step then would be to get some knowledge base into play. Remember to look at the launch pad and get your collaboration channels up and running. If you need some help, talk to your account team. Finally, we have some public documentation you can go and read. Um, it's quite a long URL, so Google New Relic Centre of Excellence and you should find it.